That is the hottest coffee I've put on my tongue in a long time. That coffee is as hot as McDonald's coffee used to be back in the 70s and 80s before they had that big lawsuit. Oh my goodness, that's hot. Welcome everyone to the stream. If you're new, my name is Brian. This is where MAGA comes to talk. And, you know, I saw this incredible press conference last night that President Trump had with Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. And I did not, I was going to do a stream after the press conference, and I didn't do the stream after the press conference because what they talked about was so heavy. I really, I wanted to process it and sleep on it and not just do a knee-jerk response to what they were talking about. And, you know, life in this country is so freaking hard right now because of this senile, corrupt old coot, Joe Biden, and the Uniparty. And, you know, there, there are struggles going on. You know, there's um, a trend going on that a lot of people complain about. And I, I complain about it. I, I don't care for it. If, if you ever go anywhere uh, and use, you know, Apple Pay or whatever, you know, or a debit card or something, because who pays in cash these days, right? They always ask you for a tip. And sometimes they're asking for a tip in a place where they're helping you for like 30 seconds. And I, I, I've heard people in the news complaining about it. And it got kind of aggravated me about it. And I went and got takeout yesterday from a new uh, Japanese restaurant. It's in my neighborhood. I've been, I, I put a picture of it up on uh, Instagram. And I went up and ordered and um, did takeout, takeout. So I didn't have a waitress or anything. And it asked me for a tip. And a lot of people, and I'll, I'll explain how this relates to Biden, don't worry. A lot of people get pissed off when they ask you for tips in places like this. And I get it, because I, I did too. And then I realized Biden has effed us over so much in this country that people are struggling so hard to freaking survive that even if they're not deserving of a tip because they didn't give me any service, I'm going to give them a tip because what's going on in, in this economy is difficult. You know, people that work in the service industry with prices of groceries up 40 percent, um, school will be out soon, but back before you know it, and, 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 and people that work in those types of businesses have to buy you know, shoes and new clothes and everything for their kids for the next year, the next school year. They've got to figure out somehow for their kids to be taken care of and watched over while they're working over the summer that's that's coming. So I, I'm tipping in those instances now um, because I, I, people need it. People need it, you know? And, you know, you guys do what you want to do. I mean, and, it, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not telling everybody they should do that, but I, I know how expensive it is for me and um, the struggles in my own family that because of the price of everything. So President Trump comes out with Mike Johnson and um, he was asked yesterday, President Trump, about Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to unseat Mike Johnson and President Trump said it's unfortunate. And Marjorie Taylor Greene said a few weeks ago that Mike Johnson is being blackmailed. And, you know, I trust Marjorie Taylor Greene, but I always stand by Trump. And I said um, a few weeks ago, I told you guys, I said, you know, you know this, this election, it's, it's not just that generic, this is the most important election of our lifetime. They're all important, but no, no election in anyone's lifetime in this country has been even close to as important as this one because this election is about whether our civilization is going to survive, right? Because if Trump does not win in November, it's not just that we won't have a country, the Western civilization will be collapsed at that point. And I said a, a few weeks ago, I said, listen, 
I said, President Trump is going to bring people into the fold that you don't like and I don't like. There's going to be people that he tells us are good guys that we think are complete sellouts and traitors and, and liars. If President Trump brings them into his fold, we've got to support him and whoever he brings in. I don't care who it is. And he, President Trump understands more than even we do what the stakes are because he sees all the behind the scenes briefings and he knows everything that's going on. And that press conference yesterday with Mike Johnson, they want to, the media, what they want to do is make it about, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene and all, and all of this. It's not about that at all. That press conference yesterday that President Trump had, and I listened to um, Mike Johnson's remarks too, because President Trump spoke, then Mike Johnson gave a little speech, and then President Trump took questions. And I listened to every syllable of every word that, uh, of course, President Trump said, but that Mike Johnson said too. And they detailed what these low-life, uniparty people are doing. They're replacing the American people with South American people. You know, the great replacement theory. They didn't say the replacement theory, but that's what they said. They just used different words. Um, and it's a problem. Uh, it cooled off a little bit. It's kind of cold here. It's in the 60s right now here in South Florida. I was going to ride the MAGA scooter here to the, to the Starbucks, but it was a little too chilly, so I r drove in my car. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Everyone who's already subbed, like the video. So President Trump's partnered up with Mike Johnson, and... Um, you know, I did a whole show on Thursday. If, if you go back and watch my live stream, yeah, it's the, yeah, but it's primarily, it's mostly South American because we got the physical border. You're right, people from all over. But um, if you watch my live stream from Thursday morning, um, I was all about, you know, Mike Johnson's, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene says he's got to go, he's got to go. Now that President Trump brought in the Mar-a-Lago, he's partnered up with him, that's, that's gotta be all forgotten. That's gotta be all forgotten. And uh, that doesn't mean that I trust Mike Johnson, but President Trump has partnered up with him and he trusts him to get us through this election, um, seal the border, do the deportations, and save our country. And we gotta stand by Trump and everything he does this isn't some time to take issues. I, 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 I know a lot of people I saw on, on X last night are pissed off that Trump had um, Mike Johnson at Mar-a-Lago and did this. I'll never be pissed off at Trump, will you? <clears throat> Believe me. You know, President Trump, he, you know, when, when he gets together with someone like Mike Johnson, it's not about politics. It's about... Um, achieving his goal, what, what his goal is. And we know what his goal is. He's got a bunch of things on the agenda, but he's got a goal, and that's what he is uh, all about, Donald Trump. So you've got to support him and whoever he brings into the fold. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. And uh, no one should be criticizing. No one who's MAGA. And, and I know people that are friends of mine. I saw on, on X criticizing Trump. People that are well-known. You know, no, no one who's MAGA should take issue with anything Trump does. You know? Um, we got to do whatever he says to do and support whoever he says to support. And, you know, they have a very detailed plan with these... Um, with these illegals that they're bringing here. Very detailed plan, and it's not an accident. It is by design. Make no mistake about it. I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna go to my car and get a, a sweatshirt because it's cold, I'll be right back.
course, it's a Trump sweatshirt. Hold on. I just got my regular. Oops. Sorry, guys. I dropped the mic. I thought I had my Trump sweatshirt, but I don't. Hold on. It's just my regular sweatshirt. Oh, well. It'll still keep me warm. It's my hoodie. Oh my goodness! The uh, <laughs> when I I thought this was my Trump uh, hoodie, and I so I, I took my mic off to put the hoodie on, and then I realized it's just my regular little hoodie. It's not my Trump one. It has a zipper on it, and my mic is held on by a magnet. And I laid the mic down on the hood of my car, and all that noise you were hearing was me trying to get the magnet off the car. The magnet wanted to stay on the car. So, back to what I was saying. The, the, what, what President Trump and Mike Johnson talked about last night was detailing the Great Replacement Theory. The Great Replacement Theory is now fact. You know, scientific theories, political theories can be proven factual. And they detailed what's going on here. Um, you know, the, and what President Trump said was it's, it's insane what they're doing. They're emptying out their, their local jails, their prisons. They're insane asylums because in these third world countries, they still have insane asylums, unlike us here, you know. Our mentally ill walk the streets because of Geraldo and his uh, awful reporting back in the 70s. But, but Biden, you know, so I put in the title of this, why, why is Biden making it hard to survive? Because he, they're done with the American people. The uniparty establishment, the permanent Washington class, are done with the American people, and they're freaking pissed off at us because we don't support them, we support Trump. And everything about these people in government isn't about making your life one bit easier. It's about doing things to make money off the federal treasury, whether it's donor kickbacks or just stealing from the, you know, from these deals like they're doing with this fake war in Ukraine. And the, the permanent Washington class are done with the American people. They're done with us. Basically say, fuck them. That's what they said. Fuck the American people. That's what they've said. And, you know, and, and you, and you can see it. So, I mean, name one thing that, that Joe Biden and the Uniparty have done since Joe Biden's been occupying the White House that has made one American life easier. And I don't mean South American. I mean, like, United States of America. What, what, is, what have they done that's made any of our lives easier, better? They're punishing us. They're making it harder. Right? I mean, I, you know, and obviously I'm, I'm partisan. I love Trump. I'm MAGA, you know, but I'm open minded. If, if, if I could, if I can think of one thing that Biden did that helped the American people, I'd tell you, but he hasn't. They're done with us. They want us gone because we don't support them. And that's, that's the reality. And you know what? And I think it's obvious. It's obvious. And you know, we're not looking for handouts. We're just looking to be left alone have gas prices at a reasonable price, you know, because the, pri the price of oil affects the price of everything. And, 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 and this inflation that we're in is a direct result of Biden's raising of the gas prices. That's it. And, 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 and it's, it's going to continue to be that way. You know, it's going to continue to be that way. So did, did you all watch... President Trump and Mike Johnson. You know, I watched it on Right Side Broadcasting. Was it carried on Fox? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't carried on MSNBC or CNN. It should be. It was, you know, that, that speech that Trump gave and Mike Johnson gave, those are the sprinklers coming on. It's like 60 degrees 
but I don't think I'll get wet here. Um, that speech that President Trump gave and Mike Johnson gave was was historic. I have never seen a president and a speaker of the house have a joint speech and press conference like that. You know, presidents have gotten together with speakers of the house, but it's it's all ceremonial to give somebody an award or some historic signing. That that was a a, a major alert to America and to the American people yesterday. I mean, it was like, you know, all hands on deck. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. And it's going to continue to get harder to survive for Americans. I mean, how how many of you are on um, fixed incomes? You're on a fixed income how what what can you do with these price increases me you know i'm i'm on the verge of physical collapse i have been working 18 hours a day um for a long time and th- this last week it really caught up with me it really really caught up with me um i was so um exhausted. I thought I was going to end up in the hospital a couple days ago, you know? Um, but that's what I got to do. I got to work more. I got to do more things. Um, but if you're on, if you're, if you're retired, if you're on a fixed income, you, you can't do that. If, if you are, if you have a, a, a job where you're a tip worker or an hourly worker, Maybe they'll give you some extra hours at your job. Probably won't. So you got to find a, a, a part-time job on the side. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. But, you know, you've got kids. You've got families. You've got to, to you know, or can you physically do it? You know? And, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky in my profession that there's, you know, I have a lot of skills that, you know, I can do extra work and earn extra income, but it's still, it takes a, it takes a physical toll, you know, that's, that's why I, I, I didn't make it in on, um, Tuesday morning. I took Tuesday off. I was too exhausted to, um, drive. I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't do it. And it pained me to do that. I was just so exhausted. I didn't feel safe to get on the road because I've been working so much. So yet yesterday, when I got home from uh, work, I, I did, I took a break yesterday. Try to catch up, you know. But I got a long list of things I got to do today. But um, the struggles that people are going through right now are there, there's no hope from the Democrats, and you know if you're watching this and you're new to my channel and you're you're not supporting Trump, you know, and and you're not and you're telling yourself you're going to vote for anybody but Trump in November. Ask yourself this question I asked a few minutes ago: Name one thing in your life that Biden has made better or easier. You know, right? You know. I mean, can you? Yeah. And if if Trump does not win in November, you, you you know, when I'm done with this stream, don't do it now, but wait till I'm done streaming. When I'm done, go to Right Side Broadcasting on YouTube. Watch the entire event with President Trump and Mike Johnson yesterday. Watch President Trump speak. Watch Mike Johnson's speech and listen to it carefully, both of them. And then watch the Q&A. Watch the whole thing. Especially those of you that are are a never-Trumper or a Democrat or something. And and look, look at it, watch it, think about it as they detail what Joe Biden and these never-Trumper, uniparty, Democrat, Republican establishment people are doing 
to the American people. They're replacing us with South America. And this isn't the kind of immigration we had in the past. You know, they, they keep talking about these waves of immigrants in the past. Those, ma uh, you know, those mass waves of immigration periods that we've had in this country, the vast majority of it was after the Civil War. Um, remember, 80% of Americans are descendant of immigrants. Think about this. 80% of Americans are descendant of immigrants who came to America after the Civil War. 80% little higher, but about 80%. Um, but then when, when um, those waves of, and by the way, my family was, uh, part of it was here long before some of it was after, you know. But during that period, when, when our ancestors, when our great grandparents, our great, great, great granddaddies and all that came to America, they didn't have EBT debit cards given to them that were reloaded with $2,000 every month. They didn't have um, free housing given to them in, in beautiful hotels in New York City, okay? Um, they didn't even have free public education, right? So, you know, they, what we had during those periods, we had none of this social welfare retirement plan that the illegals are benefiting from. They come here now. They had to work, and we had nothing but open spaces. And, and at that period of time, although, you know, a lot of it, the Industrial Revolution was happening, but the, the, the economy was primarily uh, an agrarian economy, meaning agriculture, so, uh, you know, or physical labor. So, you know, people came here and did physical labor and survived. You know, now they're not coming here to work. They're coming here to retire. You know, they're coming here to retire. It's bullshit. You know, I mean, I hope to be able to, I, I'll never fully retire. I'll never fully retire. Um, my birthday's coming up on... What's today's date, guys? I, I don't even know the date. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so flustered, day and night. What's today's date? I don't even know the date today. It's the 13th. Okay, so my birthday is a week from today. It's April 13th. My, my birthday is a week from today, April 20th. And I'm going to be 53. And I have been working regularly. I mean, like, since I was... And I, and, and I know you guys, too, okay? Um, so I'm not complaining or doing like Hannity and bragging. But I, I've been working pretty much full-time since I was 16. So I, I've been working full-time for 30, it'll be 38 years. Think about that, 38 years. Right? And I, I don't think I'll ever fully retire. Not, not until I'm so old and feeble that I can't talk, right? But these illegals are coming here. They're, they're, they're young people in their 20s they're retired the moment they walk into this country. And the, and, and, um, it, it, and, and I know many of you in this stream probably are retired living on, on social security, right? Some of you are, I don't, think about it. Um, the illegals that are coming here that haven't paid 10 cents in, in, into our Social Security, into our Medicare system, they're getting, a, a, they're getting more money per month than you are probably for your average Social Security recipient who's retired here in the United States. Think about that. Think about that. And, and remember, many of them are criminals. Think, think about that. More than you're getting. 
And the powers that be don't give a shit. Because you don't support them. You don't vote for them. You're, you're, you're voting Trump. So fuck you. Fuck them. Right? You're voting for Trump. You're done. These newcomers, they'll support us. So they get, the, they get all the free crap. I'm sorry to use the profanity, but I'm, I'm pissed. And, I, and, you know, and, and, I, and aren't you? It's disgusting. You know, here I am. I'm sitting out in front of this Starbucks. You hear cars going by, you know. And these, a lot of them, they're people going to work. You can tell they're in their work clothes, right? You know, here they are, Saturday morning going to work. These newcomers, they're sitting back, relaxed. You know? Because they're retired. You know? And, and, and you and me, you're either, you're either struggling, you're on, a, you're, you're on your retirement, you know, you're on your social security. Um, and don't, don't assume just because someone has social security they have a pension, that's, that's not true, you know. Most people don't have a pension. You know? They just, and, and maybe when you were reaching that Social Security age, you said, oh, that, you know, it's, I'll be able to get by, you know. I have a little extra money still. But not when groceries are up 38, 40%. Right? I think about it. Think about that. And what, uh, tr uh, Trump mentioned this skanky Daniels judge. I mean, look at this guy. This is fuck, just freaking insane. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm so mad that the profanity is just flowing right off my, my lips here. This judge in the, in the Stormy Daniels case, I, I want you to think about this. Think about this. His daughter get $10 million from the Biden-Harris campaign and Adam Schiff campaign. And you're not supposed to talk about that? I don't know how much my wife and I are spending in, in, on our food bill. And the reason I don't know is because I don't want to know. I don't want to know. So, so this judge's daughter gets $10 million for political consulting. Bull crap. The daughter's political consultant job is to the judge in the Stormy Daniels case what Burisma is to... Um, Biden. Guy just came by. He's uh, in his medical scrubs and he, he gave me a wave because of the MAGA hat. I haven't streamed from this location in about a year. Last time I came here, I used to live stream here quite often on Saturday and Sunday mornings. And about a year ago, maybe a little less than a year, um, a lunatic just... There used to be a guy, I would come here and stream on the weekends. Some of you may have seen me do that. And there were some, I had some weird instances here of uh, problems that I'm not having today. There used to be um, a homeless guy over here on a CPAP machine and uh, he'd get pissed off because the MAGA hat. And then there was this liberal guy who would come here and just sit behind me and stare at me the whole time I was streaming. I don't know if any of you remember that guy. Just he would sit back there and stare, you know, like there's something, you know, like a, you know, in, in kind of a threatening kind of way. And but the last time I came here, this guy got a little violent. It was I had to stop the stream. I it was it was pretty brutal. He was getting really nasty, and I was being cool with him. And then all of a sudden, he just lost it. And. Uh, I still, you know, so I haven't streamed here in a, in a long time. It's been close to a year. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. My name is Brian, and uh, this is, of course, where MAGA comes to talk. I live stream every day. And most often, if I'm in one of my studios, um, I take live calls when I'm on the air. Now, today, I'm, I'm um, remodeling my studio at home. Um... 
and uh, setting up a more proper podcast studio. I'll still have my nice, you know, my screen, my, my green screen and all of that that I used, you know, we, I show the articles, but I'm setting it a, a more proper podcast studio in there that's a little more comfortable for my wife, Kathy, so she can um, relax when we're podcasting a little bit because she's, she's having a lot of health issues this year, very difficult health issues. So, so we're uh, redoing that whole studio to make it easier for her a little bit and, a little, and, and more aesthetically pleasing for me. Um, tips are not paid to them, their checks are taxed. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, I, I don't like to tip through the, I like to tip in cash, but how often do you have cash today? Right? I mean, I, I don't carry too much cash. Groceries are killing us. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I remember when my uh, daughter was, was in, in elementary school, how difficult it was. Right? Um, it, um, it's expensive and it's tough when you're a young parent. But, uh, yeah, groceries are tough right now. Well, you know, here, here's the thing, though. The, the, big, the big, you know, I was talking a couple days ago. Right now, it, it seems we're in a lull with the political news, a lull because the nomination's been sewed up. We haven't had the convention yet. But I got to tell you that Mike Johnson, President Trump press conference at Mar-a-Lago was a wake-up call. And um, even if what Mar you know, I, I always will trust and be with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I mean, there's no doubt about it, but always Trump first. So... What, what they detailed last night that, that Biden, the Democrats, the Republican uniparty establishment are doing is frightening. Frightening. Um, and, you know, when you go back and watch that entire press conference and listen to what they say, you know, I, I don't, I, and I don't want anybody to think I, I trust Mike Johnson. I don't, but I trust Trump. And Trump is, you know, a lot of times Trump will, um, I give you an example. Um, Trump recently had a brief meeting with Ben Shapiro, who, um, you know, Ben Shapiro lives not far from me, lives down the street from here. I always get these Ben Shapiro sightings from people. I've not seen him around, but we live in the same neighborhood. Different developments. <laughs> I'll tell you that for sure. But um, he, you know, Ben Shapiro is a never Trumper, right? And believe me, President Trump knows that. And, 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 and Ben Shapiro has said terrible things about President Trump. And, he even, I heard, I heard Ben Shapiro say once, of course he bonked Stormy Daniels. He used that word bonked, you know. Oh, crap. Didn't do anything with Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels even said so in that statement she signed. And, and believe me, President Trump knows all about that. But President Trump understands that Ben Shapiro reaches a lot of people. I don't know why. You know, I think he's annoying. He talks as fast as an auctioneer. Um, I don't enjoy him, listening to him. I do agree with him on his positions on Israel. And he, he's a never, but, but President Trump knows, hey, Ben Shapiro reaches some people. He, he, he's not stupid enough to openly oppose Trump right now so he can help Trump get the word out to his um, people. So he's pleasant to Ben Shapiro. That's fine. You really think President Trump trusts Ben Shapiro, likes Ben Shapiro? No. And, and, and that very well may be the case with Mike Johnson. You know, I, when I saw Mike Johnson there, when, when President Trump was taking questions, and Mike Johnson said back, Mike Johnson, uh, he's too perfect for me. His shave is perfect, his skin's perfect, 
every hair on his head's perfect. He reminds me of Mike Pence. But President Trump understands that the greatest threat that, that we're facing right now is this invasion, this nonstop invasion of criminals and mental patients that are coming through the southern border. And he knows that Mike Johnson, may, Mike Johnson may hate Donald Trump like the plague, but he's in a position to help Donald Trump achieve what he's got to achieve, so he's going to take it. He's going to use it. So, you know, there's a lot of people, like, like for example, Nancy Pelosi. You ever, you, this, uh, you know, she's an evil person, Nancy Pelosi. Saw a great video montage on X this week that shows Nancy Pelosi when she, you know, when she was in Congress speaking and it shows what her net worth was then and then it goes through her whole career to what her net worth is now. And you may say, well, I, I, you can't trust Nancy Pelosi. You can trust Nancy Pelosi to be what it is she is, a corrupt person. And, you know, when you know what somebody is all about, you can trust them to be themselves. So you can take these creeps and these never Trumpers. See, a lot of these never Trumpers, these fake MAGA people that are uh, influencers, they know now, you know, some of them made a run to DeSantis and thought that was, you know, Trump was going to get locked up, you know, and all this stuff. Like Dave Rubin, for example. Sure, Dave Rubin. Boy, that guy loves himself, doesn't he? And they now know, though, Trump's the man. If they come out against Trump, they're no longer going to be an influencer. They're going to be washed up has-beens. So these never Trumpers that are fake MAGA right now, you know, the Dave Rubin types, okay, they can be useful to us. You know, even, even Megyn Kelly, who still hates Trump, they can be useful and help us win because they don't, they, you can trust them to want to survive as an influencer, as a media personality. So they're not going to come out and fully trash Trump and they're even going to support him on occasion. So you can trust them to do that. So he uses some of these people. And that's, that's fine. It, 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 the things are too important. What we're facing now is too important. So two weeks from today, I'll be leaving on our cruise. I know many of you will be there on the Celebrity Beyond. I'm very excited. I will be doing live streams um, on the cruise ship in the mornings like I'm doing now and things. So you guys can see me do that. And the actual um, vlogs of the cruise ship and everything that I do, you know, showing the ship and what we're doing and the islands and stuff, I'll put on my other channel, the Main Street Moments channel. Not a fan of Shapiro. Yeah, no, I'm not either. I've never liked him. You know, the, the reason that he's so, I shouldn't say popular, but the reason that he's so watched and listened to is because they pour massive amounts of money into um, marketing his program on all these platforms so they get pushed to everybody, you know? He's not um, so widely watched, seen, or listened to because people like him. I mean, I, I know a handful of people that can actually say, can admit me, yes or no? Do you like Ben Shapiro? I, I mean, I, I know like one guy, one guy who's a friend of mine likes Ben Shapiro. And the reason he does is because my, my friend that likes him is Israeli and he, you know, of course he's very concerned about the survival of Israel with what's going on and Ben Shapiro does a lot of work helping um, Israel. It's not too much when you're with us. I mean, we just, our, our group on the cruises, we just have a great, great time. They're, they're very nice and... Uh, you know, because it's a cruise, the weirdo people that you hear on the phones, they don't go on the cruises. It's nice, nice people. Most of the people on the cruise, there's a lot of people here from YouTube on the cruise. I, I'd say um, about 60 to 70% 
of the people on the cruise are people that watch on YouTube or listen to my podcast. Um, about 30, 40% are from, from the radio. And um, most, of the, most of the people you don't even know. You, know. you don't hear them ever call in uh, or even chat. New guy working with Lara Trump and Charlie Kirk. Are you talking about Scott Pressler? Yeah, Scott Pressler. I, I've known Scott Pressler, I don't know, about 10 years, close to eight, eight years. But Richie's not going. Richie went on the first couple, but Richie's had a lot of health issues. He went on our first two cruises. I, first two? Yeah, first two. This is our fifth. It would have been our sixth, but this is the one we didn't take because of uh, all the shutdowns and lockdowns. I've always wanted to go to Aruba. So, Richie is a uh, like almost semi-professional blackjack player, and on one of our cruises, he, uh, my uh, my daughter went to the blackjack table with Richie, and uh, he, you can bet on other people's hands. I don't know about all this stuff, but Richie does. My daughter won one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred and seventy-five dollars betting on Richie <laughs> blackjack table. But we did a whole thing where Richie gave a lesson on how to play blackjack in a cruise casino. And uh, a lot of people showed up. And he, he brought the, he had these cards that like magicians use. Like he bought a deck of cards with cards like this big and showed everyone how to professionally play blackjack. It was really interesting. Yes, ID will be on our cruise, absolutely. In fact, ID, you are sitting at my table. So I did the uh, seating charts and the seating arrangements for everybody, and uh, I put you at my table. So you'll be sitting with me for a week, having dinner every night, ID. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> oh, boy. 21. I don't gamble. I don't even go in the casinos. And my daughter, I don't give her money to go to the casinos. I make her gamble with her own money. I am uh, not into I work too hard to gamble. Oh my goodness. Is it safe for me here? <laughs> it's not an accident, it's behind me. Um, so back to what we were talking about though. Um, I, I think that that, that speech that um, President Trump gave with Mike Johnson last night, both of them, in the press conference was probably the most important speech and press conference Trump may have ever given because even though it probably didn't get coverage outside of right side broadcasting, did they carry it on Newsmax or Fox? Probably not, maybe, I don't know, you know. But they detailed the biggest problem that we are facing, right? And it's not just that the border doesn't exist anymore, it's what they're doing with it, you know? and uh, how their goal is to replace the American people. I, I just thought it was just, it was frightening. That, that's why, you know, that's why I didn't do a, sh I was gonna, when I, before the speech, I, I was gonna do a live stream after, and then I watched it, and I started to set up to do a live stream from my home studio last night and play some of the clips, and I said, you know what, this speech was so important. I, I said, I want, want it to sink in a little bit. I don't want to just do a knee-jerk thing, which is very, yeah, every time I come here, there's always somebody that does the punking. That's why I stopped coming here. But, um, and when I woke up this morning and was thinking about it, it really, I'm glad I waited to talk about it because it just, so heavy. Yeah, the, see, Starbucks, which is insane, this guy here that's sitting behind me is homeless. Starbucks has a policy where homeless people can camp out nationwide at any of the restaurants, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It is so unsafe, you know. You, 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 I see the, 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 the uh, young women and girls that go in and out of Starbucks. They're by themselves, they're young, you know. And you know how girls dress today. They don't dress, you know, appropriately. 
and they're coming to these places where there's these homeless people. Most homeless people, you know, are, have warrants, mental illnesses and things like that, and it's just not safe. But here we've got, there's tables all the way down in both directions. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten tables and about 15 chairs. And the guy just has to, he, he just picks the one right behind me. Are you kidding me? I think that's just a coincidence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The homeless, this is not the same guy that used to be here. The, the other homeless guy, he slept here all night and... Um, he, he had the CPAP machine, so I don't know what happened to him. I, I have not been here. <clears throat> I'm not leaving until I'm done with my coffee. You know, but the, the, the MAGA hat is um, triggering to people when I come here. He went inside. Yeah, he probably went inside to use the men's room. That's why, you know, I would never use the men's room in a, in a, in a Starbucks. But there's no freaking way that out of all these tables and chairs, a dozen tables, 15 chairs, he just decided to sit behind me. Yeah, right. Get another one for the ride? Well, this is four shots of espresso in here. So if I got another one, that'd be eight shots of espresso. I don't think I need eight shots of espresso. So I've been up to, you know, I've been up today. I got up today at three and um, tore down my entire studio, the whole room I use for my studio at home. And um, I've got a guy coming over today who's actually going to, Fox did carry it, that's great, Jen. I've got a guy who's coming over today who's going to uh, do some drywall work, and, 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 I, and he's gonna paint the room too. I'm not good at drywall work. But this guy's done, done work at my house in the past. He's very good. He doesn't charge too much money, thankfully. I could run home with all that caffeine. You know, I, um, I'm addicted to coffee like, like Hunter is to Coke and hookers, you know? Yeah, Captain Kate will uh, hopefully be our captain. She's on the ship now, so. I should sleep in on the weekends. I wish I could. I can't. I can't. I, I went to bed pretty early last night, though. I start my, you know, my wife and I, we like to, uh, at night, we turn off the news and, you know, and wind down. Because I, I can't watch the news before bed. I got to watch. So we, um. We try to pick shows to binge watch, to escape from the suffering, you know, I, and started watching a show. It's an old show that I've never, never, wa thank you, Ember, that I've never watched in my whole life, Gunsmoke. Great show, Gunsmoke. Anyone watch Gunsmoke? And, um, you know, James Arnaz. And um, great show. And um, I had no idea Dennis Weaver was, was on Gunsmoke, I had no idea. And it, it's so interesting to watch, you know, Gunsmoke was on the air for 20 years and uh, it's on the Paramount Plus app, <clears throat> but it doesn't start until like season seven. They don't have the first seven seasons. And uh, I've never watched Gunsmoke, never. I've watched old TV shows and Westerns, but I never watched Gunsmoke for whatever reason. But it's 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 so interesting. I, I I've watched maybe f four episodes. The writing, the the acting too. It's phenomenal, you know. Because what you uh, here we go, what you have today. Um, you don't have educated, talented people. You have people that they check off uh, boxes with, right? They they fit this box. They fit that box. They don't hire like educated, talented people. And it's, it, you don't re realize it because that's all there is now, but you go back and watch a show that's that old and um, you can see the difference in the quality of writing because writers had to be 
talented and educated as opposed to now where they got a bunch of check marks okay you're asian black lesbian okay you got it you're the, you're the head writer <laughs> right you know you know what i mean and it's it's really amazing you, you see the whole pfft. it's 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 just in, in, insane you know it really truly is but i will tell you this that um i know i know not an accent but you know the um the speech last night with um with trump and mike johnson i'm gonna watch it again today i'm gonna watch it again today um You know, and I, and I was wondering, is is there a, is there a, let me ask you this, because this is nuts. This is a nutty thought, but I was thinking about this last night when I was watching the speech, and it is so unusual for a president and speaker of the house to have a major policy announcement like that. It's even it's even more unusual, and it may never have happened before where you have a, um, a president who's not president, right, who's running for president again, because that hasn't happened in a long time. Because, you know. But the Speaker of the House there endorsing them and setting a, a very important policy goal, which is also a national security issue, too, they were talking about. Historic speech, very unusual, very historic. And when, it, so Trump talked, Mike Johnson talked, and then Trump took questions, and then Mike Johnson stood back in the back behind Trump over his right shoulder and was nodding in agreement when Trump was talking and answering questions. And this, and I'm going to ask you this question, yes, you can let me know yes or no, not if you want this, but is this a possibility? Is it possible that Trump will pick Mike Johnson to be his running mate? What do you think? Is it possible he will pick Mike Johnson to be his running mate? Yes or no? Just based on that press conference yesterday at Mar-a-Lago, which is very unusual. I'm not not if you want it, but is Trump considering it? You don't think he's considering? Not, well, not not if you want it. Do you think Trump's considering it? <clears throat> All knows. We don't know who he's going to pick. I, I don't think Tim Scott's all that likely. Um, Gunsmoke is not boring. you got to go back and watch it. Um, I think Tim Scott was getting a lot of play because South Carolina was coming up, and he's the sen sitting senator from there, so he was important. But Tim Scott gets so weird when he's on stage talking. He turns into that Arsenio Hall preacher character from Coming to America. Well, there's another possibility, too, with all these defections. Now, I don't trust Sarah Huckabee either. Um, there's another possibility, too, that he's partnering with Mike Johnson to stop more people from resigning so that the Democrats don't take over the House. <clears throat> Nobody knows who Trump's going to pick. Trump may not even know at this point. I know we said uh, a few months back that he's already decided, but... A lot's happened between then and now, so he may not. Um, he may not uh, be set on that person. He may have changed his mind. Yes, welcome. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Okay, and everyone who's already subbed, make sure you like the video. You know, I, 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 everybody likes Christy Nome, but we don't know too much about her. You know, <clears throat> well, I mean, I like Christine. I'm like, I don't care who he picks. It's not really on my list of importance. It's important, but what's most important is him winning. I'm not into speeches. I like to see action, right? And last night with Trump and uh, Mike Johnson wasn't really a speech. It's action because we've seen Trump take action.
the only person that's 100% trustworthy is Trump. Mm-hmm. He's going to pick whoever he thinks will uh, be the best person to help him achieve what his agenda is, Trump. That's who he'll pick. So who that is can change week to week, you know? No one knows. I think he's handled this Arizona law well leaving it up to the states. I think he's, I know they're trying to portray him as pro-abortion, which is insane. Well, just because someone's vice president doesn't mean they're going to get the nomination. You know, Biden got skipped over for Hillary. You know, those days are over. She never addressed the Lewandowski. Why should she address the Lewandowski rumor? Really? Why? Oh, my God. I'm almost done with the coffee. It will not be Carrie Lake. Mm -mm. It will not be Carrie Lake. Mm -mm. No. If she was already in the Senate and had been in the Senate for a couple years, maybe... But uh, it's not going to be her. Not while she's running. Mm -mm. She's going to have... Carrie Lake has a real disadvantage in Arizona. It is... Um, it's a tough race. She is... Um, she, she had it locked up when Cinema was in the race because the Democrat vote was split. But now that it's a Democrat versus her, it's going to be a tough, tough one for her in Arizona, unfortunately. It's going to be a very difficult one. And I think she knows it. Mm -hmm. I don't think so at all, Kevin. The op in fact, the opposite is true. The guy from California, I'm not sure who that is. I didn't say Trump was going to lose Arizona. I think it's going to be hard for Kerry Lake. Oh, Larry Elder? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, who the vice president is going to be, that's, people always bring that up in every election. It's, it's, think about it. When have you ever voted for president because of the vice president, ever? Have any of you ever voted for someone because of who the nominee was for vice president? I mean, I'd like Sarah Palin when she was running for vice president, but no, that has no impact whatsoever. None. In fact, it has less it has like less than no impact. Who cares, really? No. And I, and I don't think anyone does. Rudy Giuliani's awesome, but it won't be him. Uh, there's no way it'll be him. <clears throat> Let's see. I have no garbage can outside. Walk into the car. Yes, it's it's cold, but we have palm trees. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Now what do you guys think? Do you think Yes, it's much warmer in the car. Do you think that that homeless guy sat behind me by coincidence with a dozen tables or on purpose. <laughs> and why? So strange. I, I dropped the top to my coffee cup. I picked it up. Okay? I don't litter right there. They have no garbage can, so I'm taking the coffee cup home. Yeah, on purpose. Why? Does it want to be on YouTube? Or uh, the MAGA hat? Why? Why on purpose? Why would he do that? He's, um, he, he's sitting in a wheelchair. He, um, he walked here pushing his wheelchair, and now he's sitting in his wheelchair. How come women never stalk me? Um, 
I asked myself the same question too. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, I've, I've had some female stalkers over the years, but mostly it's men. You know, a handful of female stalkers, but mostly male stalk, stalkers. But uh, when I, th th this is exactly why I stopped coming to this Starbucks. And I used to live stream here every morning on the weekend, Saturday and Sundays, for, I don't know, a, a couple of few months. And um, then all these people started harassing me here. This one guy, this this one liberal guy who would sit behind me and just stare at me all the time, he was really creepy. And then the other homeless guy that used to be here, um, that liberal guy and the other homeless guy with the CPAP, they started having these conversations. They were they were trying to say things. That, you see, you know, when when you're out in public and um, you're in a MAGA hat, um, the uh, no, I am in I am in the driver's seat, but uh, for whatever reason, the uh, camera is using the uh, or the phone that I'm streaming on is using the. Uh, the camera that reverses everything. That's why this is probably backwards, right? But it's I'm not. It doesn't. It doesn't say "Make America Great Again" in reverse. And I am in the driver's seat. There's the steering wheel. And this is not a right-hand drive car, okay? <laughs> um, but when you're in a uh, when you're out in a MAGA hat, liberals will try to trigger you to get a reaction from you, right? They'll try to get you to react. And as difficult as it is. Never react to them. Never react to them because they want to trigger you and then you're the one with the problem. Even though they're staring at you, trying to get, you know, it is weird. I mean, I and these are, you know, just bizarre. Just bizarre. Smile and say that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But um, when I, I would... Like you guys, if you could. I mean, you don't have to, you know. I'm not like uh, Rachel Maddow who gives her, her viewers homework. Randy Rhodes does that too. A lot of these people give their, their people that watch them or listen to them home. Okay, here's your homework. You know, give me a break. <laughs> How arrogant. But I, I, I hope that you guys go and watch on Right Side Broadcasting the, the Trump, Mike Johnson speeches and press conference in its entirety and listen because that was really a warning for America. And, you know, before I go, I just want to sum up because in, in, the, in the title here, I said, why is Biden making it so hard, right, to survive? And because they want us to suffer. They're pissed off at us. They're angry. It's, they're, and what they're, they're, they're be, and what, and, and what I'm talking about is the inflation and, and all the other problems we're having they, um, it, it's, it's passive aggressive is what it is. They're making us suffer because we support Trump. It's, and they, they're making all the American people suffer. Even the Democrat American people. They're pissed off at the whole country. And they just cannot, um, they just cannot accept the fact and they don't understand why people love President Trump so much. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. You know, um, if you've ever been in, in the presence of Trump, like, if, you know, I, I mean, I've, I, I've been as close to him as I am to my phone here that I'm holding right now on multiple occasions. When, when, and you, you see this on television, like at the Chick-fil-A, okay? When you're in person with Trump and you see people interacting with him up close, it's not like love, like, oh, I love chocolate ice cream or, you know, I've got a Star Trek, uh, Star, oh, this one's Star Wars. I've got a Star Trek shirt similar to it. I love Star Wars. I love Star Trek too. But I don't, I'm not, I don't love, we all love Trump. I mean, it's real love, like a family member, like a father, like a mother, right? Like a parent. And he loves us. And um, they don't understand it this 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 guy here in the red shirt 
is in the drive-thru uh, for Starbucks. He got out of his car in the drive-thru and, and came and gave the homeless man uh, uh, two 20s. <clears throat> Just gave him two 20s. That's probably why he hangs out here. People in the drive-thru give him 20s. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't understand why Starbucks lets homeless people move in. They they literally live at the Starbucks, it's, it, and it's nationwide. It's so dangerous and unsafe for the customers, you know. He, this guy, because I, I I'm not going to show, you know, I'm not going to show the guy. You saw, but what he's doing. But you saw a little bit. I mean, I know he just made forty dollars in an hour, cash under the table. He's got a wheelchair. Um, He's got bedding. He's taking, and now he's taking his bedding out and setting up. It's it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every Starbucks is like this all over the the area, and this is a nice neighborhood I'm in. This is a, a very nice neighborhood that I'm in, and um, this is the um, this is the Starbucks that Ben Shapiro goes to. You know, so you know it's a nice neighborhood because he's loaded, <laughs> right? Um, but um, the, the, it's it's a real love that we all have for President Trump, and you really you you see it in person, like it just blows your mind. But when you, you see, like look at what they've done though, in in um, in the press to the nice lady at. Um, Chick Fil A in Atlanta, they're they're out there to discount her. I, I saw a, there's a, she was on Fox, right? And when my wife and I saw her hug Trump, my wife said they're going to go after her now. They're going to go after her, and she was on Fox yesterday or the day before. And then I saw uh, this is the you know the 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 black lady that hugged Trump. I don't care what they say about you, Mr. President. He said, come on over. And he, she hugged him. She's in my uh, thumbnail on my uh, live stream a couple of days ago um, where it says the, the people's president, Trump the people's president. And uh, um, they've already done a deep dive on her. And they said, oh, she's, she's a, a conservative activist and uh, part of Blexit. So what? And, and the way they report this, if you go to Mediaite, they did a whole story on it, but it's, it's being talked about elsewhere. Who cares that she's a, a conservative activist, that she's in Blexit? Which I, I don't even know if that's true, but say it's true. Does that mean her opinion is not valid? We know she's not some Democrat BLMer. I, you know, and I just because she, you know, black, and what does that mean? Blexit is not an organization, is it? It was that thing Candace Owens talked. What does that mean? She commented on, uh, in a Facebook group or something. I don't know, but because she may be a conservative activist or done some work for Blexit, her, she has no right to an opinion. You know, look at look at how they're doing. They're they they're discounting her. Is not yeah, of course. You know, you know, you know that that photograph pisses them off. Eighty percent of the people that work for Chick Fil A lean concern. Yeah, you know when I when you go to Chick Fil A, it's uh, the 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 people that work there, the kids that work there, are very polite, aren't they? My wife and I we go to Chick Fil A once or twice a week. And it seems to me Chick-fil-A has upgraded the quality of their chicken. To me, at least the, the Chick-fil-A in my neighborhood. But, you know, the, the love that, that this country has for President Trump, the, the uniparty, they don't understand it. They hate us because of it. And they're making it hard to survive on purpose. You know, a lot of people, you see a lot of this analysis they do. And, you know, um, Jean-Pierre and them, they'll tell you the economy is doing well. Well, it's doing well if you're, um, you know, getting money from the military industrial complex, right? Then it's doing well. 
but it's not doing well for 99.99% of the people in the, of this country, and they don't care because you love Trump, you support Trump, and if you are vocal and you support Trump, they're out to destroy. I mean, look at this homeless guy getting behind me and staring me down, you know? Just for what? Because I got to make America great again hat on? Give me a break, you know? You know, these people on the left. But I'll tell you this. When we, um, after the convention, when Trump gets the nomination, the anti-Trump forces are going to increase their attacks. It's going to get worse. It's going to get much worse because they're still going to be in, they're going to be in their last ditch effort. When he um, becomes president elect, a lot of these problems are going to start to fade away economic problems because the economic forecast will be good because Trump's coming back, just like in his first election. And then after he's sworn in for his second and nine consecutive terms, things are going to get better quick, quick. But I, I was um, talking on the show on Thursday about this with, with Steve King. When the deportations happen, the media are going to make it look like the deportations to the concentration camps in Nazi Germany, okay? It, they're gonna they're gonna pour it on so heavy, um, you know. But we're gonna have to stand strong and 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 not let them um, get to us because they're gonna work hard to try to turn people on. The 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 anti deportation media coverage and rhetoric from the Democrats in Congress, the ones that still have seats, okay. Um, is going to be some of the roughest, nastiest we've ever seen. You know, um, and they're going to try to, you know, but they don't. They you got to tune it out. You got to tune it out. Yeah, get the popcorn ready. Yeah, that is for sure. Oh, oh, it's going to be crazy, and I don't know how they're going to do it. But I'm sure President Trump is already in the early planning stages of the deportations. No doubt about it. But it's not going to be easy. They're everywhere. You know. And where are these people? You don't know. Some, a lot of them you know where they are because the checks are coming. They're using the EBT card, so I guess they'll use that to track them down, some of them. Oh, yeah. See, now this woman just walked in and she gave a, a thumbs up to the homeless guy. You know, <clears throat> nothing against the homeless, okay? I'm not hating on the homeless. I just don't think it's good business to have homeless men moving into your business. I just don't think that's good business. You know, um, I wouldn't let my daughter or my wife come here without me. Would you? With, with, and, and it's not just this. It's, uh, you know, the, there's another Starbucks I go to. Uh, they've got a homeless guy who lives there too. You know? and um, But you know what I don't see? I don't see more than one homeless guy per Starbucks. So are they like really territorial and if somebody else moves in? Because this guy's already made 40 bucks. Cash money under the table. You know, are they territorial? Like if another homeless guy moves, you know, tries to move in, do the, does the first one run him off? You know, I, I, I don't know. But I know this, it's not safe for your daughters and your wives to be coming alone to a business that has a homeless person living in the, the, the parking lot. And he's not even in the parking lot. He's in, in with the tables. It's not good for business. No, not at all. Not at all. And it's not safe. Mm -mm. No. But that's that's just me. You know? But, um, well, listen, guys. Again, if you're new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe. And those of you that are already subbed, please like the video, all right? I'll be back over the weekend. Don't worry.